So let's get started. Uh, my name is Dushant. Uh, like most of the Indian name, it's a super complicated name. Uh, Jadeja is my last name, and Dushant Singh is my first name. Uh, uh, I've been in Bangalore for almost 18 years. I did my graduation here, uh, and then I've been kind of you know, working in a few companies. Uh, did something on my own, didn't work out, and then kind of a joint corporate fell back, uh, and then finally ended up at my current job here. Uh, throughout my career, I had uh, I was fortunate enough to have an experience in engineering, uh, design, product management, business management, um, and, and currently I would say I'm kind of in a back to square one and learning something new here. Uh, so what's UX and why does it matter? Uh, I know it's a pretty broad question. Uh, I'm not trying to kind of you know, prove that I know more or kind of you, know, you guys know, but just trying to understand, you know, what is your perspective about UX here? Correct? Uh, if you have an answer, great. If you don't have an answer, it's fine. But I'm just going to show it from my point of view that you know what do i mean by ux uh like you know a pretty simple thing correct what do you think about it it's nice ui correct but it doesn't really kind of you know tell you uh, what's called to action all the informations are represented at the same level uh, it's kind of a little confusing language as well correct uh well in this one kind of you know, becomes a little bit more clear in terms of you know what an interface is trying to communicate to a user out there. Correct? Pretty simple. Uh, so, making things obvious is a key part of UX. If you're solving a problem, you have a solution, but if the solution is not obvious, you may not kind of know really solve the problem or kind of know that you're trying to address that. Let's take a second one. This is one of my favorite ones. Uh, what's wrong here? Everything? Any 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 one one thing that you know you have in mind? The state is not clear, correct? It's not clear for what switches for what particular appliance, correct? So ideal solution is what something like this. But how often do we use it, correct? So 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 the thing what I'm trying to say is that there's some sort of a cognitive overload or cognitive decision that you know. Uh, user try to mix it. When we were a kid, we have learned that you know switches are supposed to be like this. Correct? Though it's wrong. Correct? But trying to change that behavior and make it something right may not be right. So it's extremely important to realize solve it the way user want to solve it, not the way you would want to solve it. Another you know interesting example here. Uh, I'm sure all of you have taken a flight and have a boarding class. Uh, and at times when you are, if you look at this particular boarding pass, all the information are at the same level. Correct? There's no clarity of you know what is more important, what is not. Uh, and if you're trying to find an information, correct, your brain gets confused. Like, you know, what should I process here? So, in a very simple term, UX is something you know, which makes things really, really obvious. And at Google, we try to kind of you know really hard in most of our products. Sometimes we be successful, sometimes we haven't. Uh, but that's our kind of you know, philosophy around what, what we kind of you know, uh, try to implement in our products there. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the challenges in you know UX or validation, uh, what we have seen throughout working with different teams at Google, uh, some of the case studies. Maybe I'll go through one particular process in deep and how we are doing it at Google, uh, and then kind of share some of the resources. Uh, I want to be kind of, you know, be careful and make a disclaimer here is that there's no one process that entire company follows. Each different team has its own freedom and flexibility that kind of you know, works for them. The, the, the reason for it is that, you know, each team is solving a different problem. There's, each team has a different set of users in mind. Out of it. So there's no one process that can you know, solve this. What I'm going to talk about is specifically from an Android point of view, uh, you know, that our team kind of you know, does it. Uh, but can be applied to other teams as well. So, what are the challenges in UX testing? Uh, most of the time, when I talk about UX, you know, people think like like this. Anybody knows what is it? It's a Japanese tea ceremony. Uh, and if you have ever been to one of the Japanese tea ceremony, it's painfully long. <laughs> correct. To make a one cup of tea, correct, it's take five hours. Correct. <laughs> uh, Similarly, when I talk about UX or user research, uh, UX research or UX validation, people say that it's a lot of time that I have to invest into it. 
maybe I need to do primary research first, I need to do secondary research first, I need to get an insight, then give it to somebody else, I have an interfaces, put it into product, and then you do validation. Correct? And now, and, and, but your typical development schedules, they run in sprints. Correct? And every two weeks, you know, you want to kind of launch something out there. Now, how do you marry both of them? Correct? Uh, so, I'm just kind of trying to overlap. On one side, you have a development cycle and your traditional UX research cycle. Correct? So, there's, there's clearly some sort of a gap there. Something what we have tried and we have taken a liberty of kind of you know, moving away from like you know some of the core principles. Uh, the reason for it because it works for our you know product development life cycle. Uh, so what what do teams want? They want feedback before people start coding. Correct? That hey, I'm doing the right thing before I invest my time, energy, money, resources. I want to know that okay, this is gonna be like really really or the chances of failure kind of you, know, you want to uh, minimize that. Uh, you want a feedback now, uh, you know, and you don't have a time for everything. So this is an example of, you know, how we do a validation of ideas. Uh, this is a Google Glass. All of you, at least hopefully, have heard about that product. Uh, uh, really great product, but, you know, kind of didn't do that well in terms of, you know, uh, what was intended to do it. But how do we start validating that? So the first thing was that, you know, we kind of slap a phone on a, on a spectacles. It's like, hey, does it do that functionality? Correct. And then... Over a period of time, we iterate that. A uh, couple of weeks down the line is, is what kind of you know what Sergey was holding on his hand. That was a prototype which kind of you know, got out of it. Uh, and I'll kind of you know, talk about some of the processes that we have used to kind of you know, go through this validation phase there. Uh, so what we want is, is something like this espresso shot, not a Japanese tea ceremony, which takes a lot of time. But espresso shots are kind of you know, really easy to make, packs a punch, and still kind of you know, gives you. Uh, at least a good enough insight into what your solution you should be building there. Uh, so the way how I kind of know decide that if you want to do kind of understand goals and attitudes, like you kind of look at on the left hand side of this particular diagram, said okay, maybe I want to do in-depth interviews, I want to do focus group. Uh, if you really want to understand kind of know what behavior aspects of it, you kind of you know go ahead and say okay, let me do usability study, uh, let me do an A/B testing and, and stuff like that. And then there's another tangent which is a qualitative and quantitative out of it. Again, this is not a standard one. This is something you know, you'll find everywhere. You could customize it based on your need. Uh, so let's take some of those methods that I talk about. Correct? We'll be focusing mostly on the top right hand side tangent there uh, and see how it kind of you know, helps you do validation in really, really easy and shorter period of time. So the first is heuristic evolution. I'm sure all of you are aware about it. Correct? Nothing, I'll, I'll not spend much time. Uh, but here, what happens is that, you know, if you really want to identify, let me give you an example. Uh, we, we launched an Android tablet, uh, you know, sometime five, six years back. And uh, the, one of the feedback what we got from a team saying that, hey, you know, uh, the time to set up a tablet is like really, really long compared to the other standard tablets available in the market. Uh, so I said, okay, let's, let's figure out and how do we kind of you know, quantify that. Uh, so we put both tablets in side by side, kind of load it there and look at, okay, choose heuristics. So one of the heuristics what we chose here was a speed, number of seconds or number of minutes it takes for us to kind of, you know, uh, you know set up the tablet. We measure it, kind of you know, summarize in terms of, you know, what could, what is taking more, what is taking less, send a report to our team, uh, got a feedback and within a week we had a new build. Kind of you know tested again on the new new device and kind of you know, we were on kind of a you know, little better place there. Of course, it took a time for us to load or roll out this feature completely around the six months. Uh, but it is good to know that okay, you know we are on the right track out there. So this is a very easy way. So if you are, if you want to kind of you know look at quantified evidence, heuristics is is a great example for it. it doesn't take too much time, maybe three hours, four hours, depending on the kind of you know. Uh, problem you're trying to solve and the heuristic that you have uh, selected, you could do that. Uh, write system with prototypes. Anybody have heard of write? It's basically rapid iterative and testing. Uh, so we have launched. Uh, uh, you, you could you could use it with you know multiple uh, scenario here. Let's take an example of. Uh, I'm just taking an example of Google search, uh, and you would want to kind of you know try to get a feedback from 
users on a new design of Google search. Uh, so what you do is in this particular thing is that you know uh, you schedule interviews in the morning till afternoon and you have a designer and the team standby. Uh, so let's say I have a first interview at 9 o'clock. I basically present a design saying that hey what do you think about it uh, and then I kind of you know push back and kind of you know listen to users try to understand you know what kind of you know feedback I'm giving. Now I've got all this feedback and I will prioritize that out of those feedback I got I'll take one of them and give it to my designer or interface designer and say hey you know what can you create a quick mock-up of this uh, before the next interview comes it and I've kind of you know taken a R gap before the next interviewer comes there uh, and then I kind of you know, again verify that. So by the time if I do it you know over a period of time I've kind of you know gotten to a stage where I was in you know, a little bit of better stage there. Uh, we have done it multiple times. Uh, one of the things that we have used it is again take the same example of an Android tablet. People were not able to detect the the SIM slot of an Android tablet. Correct? Like, hey, where do I basically put in? Because if you look at the design, had some sort of an you know it kind of you know camouflaging the entire uh, SIM slot there, and we kind of you know, looked at it and then see what we could do there. Of course, it was difficult for us to uh, 3D print the new model of tablet there. Uh, but we had a bunch of other tablets models we were ready we were kind of saying hey what do you think about this now? Correct. so it was interesting study there uh, right works extremely well when you kind of you know have a focus change you would want to drive in your product in your solutions there correct uh, you could do it on one day or two day depending on the kind of you know, time flexibility you have and it can be done with you know one designer one researcher and maybe five users there Cafe study, this is one of the very popular UX uh, validation methods at Google. Uh, uh, we have kind of, you know, many employees who are working at Google. They're supposed to also happen uh, a good advocate of our products. Now, if you really want to get a, a quick feedback of one thing, correct, you know, it's, it's again a good uh, method to explore and, and kind of, you know, tell me, hey, what do you think about it? Uh, so we, it kind of you know, get a fresh perspective on whether what you are doing it. Uh, usually it starts with kind of you know, writing a small script, understanding you know, what are the goals of that particular methods or research that you want to drive out of it. Load the solutions on devices and kind of you know, spend not more than 5 minutes talking to users and saying, hey, what do you think about it? Uh, so this one we have done it. And if you know Android widgets, so Android phone has a bunch of widgets, you know, you, when you move, from a home screen to on your right hand side, there are a bunch of widgets are there. There's a weather widget, there's a calendar widget, and, and a bunch of other widgets are there. And when you lock a screen, what happens is that you know sometimes the widget comes on top of it. So the user were not really sure whether they are unlocking a phone or tapping on a widget or you know things that's it was bad interface design that we had. And we want to kind of you know see that how many users are falling into the trap. Are they able to you know easily able to navigate that you know uh, lock screen there? So we did a cafe study there, uh, you know, kind of you know, what got good feedback. Uh, some of our assumptions got validated there, and then we worked on it and kind of you know, moved it to a, a different sections there. Uh, again, again, super super interesting uh, method if you really want to put decisions there. Deep into pulse study there, uh, which is a kind of you know, matches with your sprint cadence here, correct? Uh, so what happens is that uh, on first couple of days of a week you kind of you know sit together and understand you know what you want to try to validate uh, and then you screen the users write a script schedule a bunch of things and also have your developer team kind of you know, part of it correct so that kind of you know both of them are working together in terms of you know building that solution there uh, uh, it's flexible in terms of you know sometimes you know depending on your sprint cycle you may want to do a one week or two weeks uh, it gives you flexibility it's not disconnected completely since teams are co-located doing together it kind of results are much much more faster there. Uh, so how do we typically start there? We try to understand what are we testing, correct? What do we want to validate? What do we want to measure here? Uh, either it's a kind of a software interface that we're trying to get some more information. Is it a hardware product? It's just a concept that we have. Uh, who are we inviting, correct? So who is the user? Correct. Extremely important for type of a product that you're trying to solve. If you're at early stage of a product where you cannot really afford to have somebody else coming 
and giving your feedback because you are not sure whether something may get leaked out. Uh, so in that case, you know, we kind of have an internal user, so maybe a Googler, uh, or it could be an external user where the product is already in the market and you're trying to validate some of the new feature that you, you know, integrate in the new upcoming release, or maybe a target profile. Can I up to you in terms of you know what it is? So identify what you want to solve or what you want to validate. Second thing, who do you want to invite? Who is the target persona there? And then who is doing what? Uh, now it's, it's extremely, you know, uh, I've seen that uh, important even at large companies like Google, where there are like six people and you know there's a one user. And they huh, tell me what do you think about it. Uh, now what happens at times the user kind of you know, get uh, it's psychological as well, correct? I mean you don't really you know, scare the, the uh, individual saying that okay, no, no, this is right, this is wrong, out of it. So having a clear rules and responsibility is very important. Uh, most of the time, we kind of ensure that there's only one person, at max two person, kind of you know, part of the entire discussion, uh, so that it doesn't become a little overwhelming for you know, somebody who is taking the time out and giving us a feedback there. Uh, so we kind of you know define a clear rules and responsibility. Who is the researcher? Who is an observer? You need somebody who's kind of taking the notes. You need somebody who's kind of you know, looking at you know uh, non-verbal signals, correct? Because human beings are like super complex. We think something different, we say something different, we do something different. Correct? So you try to pay attention to you know, all three aspects of it uh, and see you know, how you want to kind of you know, include in your uh, feedback there. Once you have you know, all those things decide, then you say, okay, where are we testing it? Correct? The environment also makes a really, really huge difference there. Uh, so we have a kind of you know, multiple uh, you know, preferences there. We have a UX uh, lab, correct? which is kind of you know, as similar as a, a typical home. Uh, you know, you could, we understand, you know, not everybody could have this kind of facility, uh, but if you try to get an uh, environment which is as close where a user is going to use a particular thing. So, for example, if you are hypothetically um, validating a solution which is like a Google Maps, right, I would be in your place, I would go to a bus and or bus stand and then try to you know, say, what do you think about it? Or maybe on a local train or, you know, things where environment is kind of you know, very similar where user is going to use the particular solution there. Uh, we also have at Google, we also have a kind of you know, an observer room. So there are a bunch of cameras where actual studies are done and uh, other people who could not be part of the research uh, or kind of you know, face to face discussion can sit back and you know kind of you know, observe uh, you know body language and answers and you know, maybe some of the things that a researcher or a observer or note taker has missed it, they could kind of you know, you know uh, take down and, and give it to team there. Uh, if you can't really do all those things, and which most of the case, cases is not, uh, you know, even we didn't have the lab for quite a long period of time. Uh, the easy is to kind of you know, maybe do online meeting, correct? If user is not there, as long as you are focusing, you are asking right questions. As long as user is comfortable, you know, bought into the entire, you know, uh, the activity that you're doing, it doesn't matter, correct? And then you could kind of you know. Look at you know environment aspects you know completely separately there. Uh, and the third step is go and execute the study. Correct. A bunch of things I want to highlight here is that you know do's and don'ts when you do a user research is that uh, you know you want to be kind of you know, really really nice and thankful because somebody is taking time you know thank them try to understand you know what they're doing. If they're coming for the first time. Hey, how was your ride? Did you had a good time? Very on time? You had lunch? Whatever. Correct. You know, just Make them feel comfortable before they go and you know do actual study there. Uh, tell them that you know uh, if something goes wrong, it's not about them; it's about the product. Correct. Uh, almost every point of time, you know, user is right and the product is wrong. Uh, don't tell them, hey, no, no, try this, try another, you know, thing around it. It doesn't really work out most of the time. Uh, by doing that, you know, even the user gets a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, so basic things, nothing, nothing kind of rocket science here. What not to do is that. No matter who you are or what company you represent, never kind of you know, try to talk about a product itself. Correct? Uh, try to talk about problem in terms of hey, give them a scenario and then see you know, how things can work out. Don't assume that the user would know what they're doing. With. Correct? Uh, so standard checklist, nothing much. If you've done user research, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, check boxes. Correct? This is one thing you know we found it really really helpful. Is that it's extremely difficult uh, and it's 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 very interesting to kind of you know listen to user, correct? You're almost every time lost in that conversation. You're kind of you not know, be in the same frame of mind and understand what user is thinking. And at times you forget taking notes, or you kind of you know, miss out some of those things. 
uh, but having check boxes saying that pre anticipate i mean anticipate like you know what users might be going to say that okay check click the box or maybe the body language was something like this correct that helps you kind of you know do a lot of writing i mean av avoids that makes you not write a lot of things and also kind of you know makes you be involved in that you know moment and you know, kind of understand what that you doing. Uh, step four is kind of you know once everything is done, debrief with them, uh, tell them you know what we can do about it. Usually that means going back to drawing board, list out priorities. Uh, another thing that we do at Google in terms of priority, we put a dollar value of each insight what we got, saying that okay, if this is the feedback I got. Correct. How much dollar value we should be putting there? Correct. Uh, let's say the five dollar, fifty dollar, hundred dollar out of it. Correct. Obviously, hundred dollar will get a priority in terms of you no know, five dollar there. That helps us kind of you know, uh, you know prioritize you know which feature we need to focus on. Uh, and then we kind of you know, send an email and then focus on to next user research or user validation all that. Uh, I just wanna any anybody know about this uh, equation? Very quick, this, this, there was research done at IBM that if you invest one dollar in, in research or validation, you will save ten dollars in your development time, and that ten dollar will hopefully help you, you know, basically have a revenue of hundred dollars there. Uh, so extremely important to kind of know. I know it. Sometimes it can be boring when you're starting initially. It is time consuming, uh, but trust me, once you get a hang of it, if it becomes you know, you know second nature of your what you're doing. Um, it helps a long way in your product development life cycle. With that, I have like you know at least three four minutes to take a question. Uh, if you like this talk, you know give your feedback. Something that didn't work out, we'll try to improve. Um, and in the meantime, if you have questions, I'm happy to take some of them. We do, we do. So it depends on what, what are we trying to solve or what are we trying to get insight into. So many times what happens, I'm just trying to give an example of, um, so Google search is a, is a, is a public product, correct? And whenever we want to kind of you know, test and validate, many times we invite uh, users who are not Googlers, correct? And you know, kind of you know, get a fresh perspective or outgoing perspective of you know, what we could do with. But sometimes when you're building a product which is not launched, correct, you don't really want to kind of you know, go ahead and do it. Uh, so either we kind of, you know, e either we kind of you know, do it, uh, we don't tell what the product is. Uh, but sometimes when you kind of you know, hide a lot of information, you don't get the right insights out of it, correct. So we usually kind of, you know, prefer on this scenario our internal employees or maybe associate employees uh, where we have, there is an NDA and, you know, a bunch of other things out of it. Uh, but we 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 don't so whatever we do user is at center of everything and we do a lot of external user research studies to answer your question on demographic we have a team spread across thankfully we have a team spread across you know multiple geographies countries and regions uh, and we take their help somebody who is building uh, in the us you know they kind of reach out to us in india saying hey guys i need your help doing this you know quick weekend study can you go ahead and do that and all of us kind of you know put our hands in the yes to do that so it, it is it is there is an incentive as well correct uh, i think most of the time it's an interest if is there, if you're an engineer you have never done a user research so kind of people join it but there is an incentive as well uh, okay so it's a good thing uh, i forgot to mention about the incentive but the incentive is part of the entire process we usually you know kind of you know, look at either giving a vouchers or maybe if it's a product depending on you know what kind of insight you are getting out of it if the if the insight is really large, you want to thankful and kind of ensure that you know the feedback you get, uh, ensure the incentive is that large as well. Thank you. 
Sure. So I'll just take a step back and you know, maybe this last question I'll take this next speaker is already here. Uh, so I would look at in terms of you know I have a less user, but is my solution is being what is the engagement level on my on my uh, on my on my solution? Let's say I'm just giving example again. I'm taking example of Google search. Assume that they the people are spending you know more time on search, but there's not many users are there. So there could be two things wrong here. Either the the results what we are showing is not really kind of you know, helpful and that's why people are spending more time or people are coming back and they're finding something around it so uh, so there are two personas I have correct so then I try to find more into in one of those direction or kind of I'll take lead in both the direction then try and more find information out of it. so it's, it's important to kind of you not know, take a hook or take a lead in terms of you know what's wrong with the current approach and then go a little deep into it like it's it's almost an iterative process at one time we we hit a roadblock and saying you know what maybe this one is what we need to do. Uh, so I don't know uh, if it helps, but try to understand in terms of you know what's wrong with this, why there are not many people, and what is currently happening with your solution there. I'm I'm very happy to kind of you know maybe chat offline uh, as as the next speaker is here, but let's let's chat more and see how we can. Thank you.